I did hear that when you were younger, you got selected to study abroad in the USA, but that you couldn't go, unfortunately, just because you couldn't afford it at the time. How do you think that your English learning journey might have been different if you had been able to go? What's going on, y'all? In this fun interview lesson, you will practice natural pronunciation, learn new vocabulary, and even about the conditionals in English. The clips we use for today's lesson are from our Beyond Borders talk show, and you can find the full interview with the incredible Anna from English Fluency Journey for free, linked down in the description. And if you would like to be able to understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and even without subtitles, then you have found the right channel because we are helping millions of learners just like you to do exactly that. Take Gloria, for example, who says that our channel helped her to get a new job. And we're excited to join you on your journey too. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single new lesson. So people are listening and maybe some of them don't know you, but they're they're hearing your voice. They're hearing that you have a really fantastic accent when you speak. Thank you. And I think there's probably a lot of assumptions that people will have, like that you probably were privileged. You probably got to live in the United States or something like that. And people, I think, are usually shocked to hear that you've never been to an English speaking country. I'm not sure if this has changed now. But I did hear that when you were younger, you got selected to study abroad in the USA, but that you couldn't go, unfortunately, just because you couldn't afford it at the time. How do you think that your English learning journey might have been different if you had been able to go? Well, I think that my life would be different right now if I if I went there, but um, no regrets, actually. I did regret about that like for a very long time. I was like, mm -hmm. damn, I lost this opportunity and I could have, I don't know, everything could have been different. Um, first of all, I want to say that I don't think that my accent is perfect and that my speaking skills are perfect and that I am so good in English, at English. And I'm still learning, like every single day, I, I'm learning something new. I practice my speaking still till this day and my pronunciation. So I've never had any like friends, like American friends to be able to talk to on a regular basis. No, that, that wasn't the case at all. Um, people assume that uh, <laughs> I, I, I hear this and read this a lot, like she's a liar. She, she, she definitely lived in the U.S. or is still there and she's just very good at keeping it a, sec a secret. Um, sometimes, you know, like people will say, oh, no, no, I definitely can hear her accent. Like she's mm -hmm. from Russia, although I'm not, I'm from Ukraine. But she's from Russia, like I can hear her accent. And, you know, like people, people are different. People have different opinions and I don't mind. they're hearing your voice, they're hearing that you have a really fantastic accent when you speak. Thank you. And I think there's probably a lot of assumptions that people will have, like that you probably were privileged, you probably got to live in the United States or something like that. An assumption is something that you think is true, although you have no definite proof. But it's a conscious choice to not promote native speakerism, which is this assumption that, you know, there is a sense of superiority based on where you're born. You probably know the verb to assume, but we also turn this into an action with the phrase make an assumption. We combine it with either the word that or about. Example, he made the assumption that the movie was going to be boring. I shouldn't have made an assumption about her. Then, when I say that there's a lot of assumptions that people will have, the word will isn't used with a sense of future like you're used to saying. Will can be used to talk about someone's habits, especially if they're annoying. This is exactly how Anna used this word here. Sometimes, you know, like people will say, oh, no, no, I definitely can hear her accent. Like she's from Russia, although I'm not, I'm from Ukraine. That you probably were privileged. You probably got to live in the United States or something like that. If you have a privilege, or if you're privileged in some way, you have an advantage over other people. 
It could be because of wealth or social position, among other things. If you're born into a family that has money, then you're already privileged because you're probably going to go to the best schools, the best universities. So if you're born into privilege, then life might not be as difficult. Yeah. And then some people that are born into privilege might then feel entitled because of that privilege. And people, I think, are usually shocked to hear that you've never been to an English speaking country. I'm not sure if this has changed now, but Shock to hear is a common collocation, we say, to mean that something we have heard is surprising. Check out this example from a clip where Andrea and I talk about Christmas traditions in the US and the UK. For me, that's just like so different than any tradition we have in the US with like the, the humor and stuff. We don't really have anything like that. And it sounds like it would be a really fun thing to do before you're kind of like digging into your dinner. It is, and I'm so surprised. I was so shocked to hear that this was just more of a British thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that other cultures did it too. <laughs> so I'm really surprised that you're shocked by it, but- We take our Christmas very seriously in the US. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if this has changed now, but did you notice that here I didn't say I'm not sure if this has changed, but I'm not sure if this has changed now, but the reason why it sounds different is because in my conversation with Anna, I was speaking naturally, connecting words and specifically in this case, I reduced has to the point where it sounds almost like is. I'm not sure if this has changed now, but has and have and also had are reduced when they're used as auxiliaries in the perfect tenses. In an example like, he's gone now, has is even contracted with he. But because I can't make a contraction like this, I intuitively contracted it in a way that sounded like an is. I'm not sure if this has changed now, but. Now, isn't it frustrating when we natives don't speak like you expect us to? Well, in our Fluent with Friends course, we will help you to master native pronunciation and connected speech so that you can understand even the fastest speaking natives. And you will do it with the Timeless TV series Friends, which various academic studies have shown is the best series for learning English. What are you waiting for? You can try it for free right now with our three-part masterclass. Just click up here or in the description below. I did hear that when you were younger, you got selected to study abroad in the USA but that you couldn't go, unfortunately, just because you couldn't afford it at the time. If you can afford something, you have enough money to pay for it. So I think a lot of learners out there, something I, I hear a lot, it's a lot of people come from places or backgrounds that they just don't have a lot of money. And so they say, you know, I can't, I can't afford your course or I can't, you know, afford a teacher. How do you think that your English learning journey might have been different if you had been able to go? Well, I think that my life would be different right now if I if I went there, but um, no regrets, actually. In my question and Anna's answer here, we have some great examples of the conditional. The word might is speculative, meaning that it is used with uncertainty. So we will often see it used with the conditional. Which conditional do you think I used in this question? You might have been different if you had been able to go. First conditional? Second conditional, third conditional. Right, I use the third conditional, which talks about the past. We form it by following this formula. If plus past perfect, then would have plus the past participle. Example, if she had studied harder, she would have passed the exam. In my clip with Anna, I used it to ask about a situation that didn't happen and to imagine the result of this situation had it been different. And if you had sold right then during that moment when it was like at $60,000 per Bitcoin, you would have made a killing because maybe you bought it for, I don't know, $100 and out of that you were able to get you know, like 600 times more money. What's interesting is that Anna answered with a different conditional. Which one did she use? My life would be different right now if I, if I went there. Zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional. So she switched to the second conditional because she is imagining an impossible situation in the present. 
She can't change what happened in the past. We form the second conditional with if plus the simple past, then would plus the infinitive. Example, if I won the lottery, I would travel around the world. If you could give a TED talk or create a video on your channel that every English learner in the world would see, what would the topic or your message be? My students always found the conditionals really confusing. If you feel the same, then I recommend you check out this lesson where you can have fun learning all of the conditionals with TV series. How do you think that your English learning journey might have been different if you had been able to go? Well, I think that my life would be different right now if I, if I went there, but um, no regrets, actually. If you regret something that you did, you feel sorry and you wish that you didn't do it or that you did it differently. You can also say, I have no regrets or simply no regrets to talk about something you did in the past. Example, I have no regrets about leaving my old job. In fact, it was the best decision I've ever made. I did regret it about that like for a very long time. I was like, mm -hmm. damn, I lost this opportunity and I could have, I don't know, everything could have been different. Anna here uses the language in a way that only advanced speakers do. One example of this is the use of the auxiliary did here. When we add do, does, or did in an affirmative sentence, we emphasize the main verb. So if someone doubts your love and asks you, do you love me? You could say, I do love you. I used did with the intention to add emphasis earlier in this clip. I did hear that when you were younger, damn, I lost this opportunity. Also, Anna used the word damn here to show she was initially upset about not being able to travel. Example, damn, I've left my keys in the office. Let's now take a look at how Anna pronounces the following. I don't know, everything could have been different. First she says, I don't know a bit faster. So it sounds like, I don't know. Unless we want to emphasize that we don't know something, this is how we say it most of the time. Then she reduces, could have been as could have been. Could have been, could have been. I've never had any like friends, like American friends to be able to talk to on a regular basis. No, that, that wasn't the case at all. On a regular basis is another way to simply say regularly. When you do something on a regular basis, you do it every day or every week or even every month. You do it regularly, not intermittently. When we say something is the case, we mean a situation is as described or that it is true. I would say often without the T, but if I want to like emphasize something, I would say often to create a more dramatic effect. But often is what I would say. That's often the case with words where we remove a sound, right? Is that we would, if we want to emphasize it, we'll like add it back in. So one of the things I was also curious about uh, from our research, I believe you kind of come from a smaller town in the Ukraine, right? Yeah. And I would imagine that in your town, like YouTube teacher is not such a common profession that you'll tend to meet people who do that, right? So <laughs> not at all. I was curious, how did your friends and your family react to you deciding to leave, you know, like the jobs that you were working on before and to pursue an online business? So my mom, she supported us. Um, some of my friends were very excited, like really I could tell, like genuinely happy for us. But most of the people, like when you say that you're a YouTuber, they, they <laughs> think that you're a slacker, basically. Like <laughs> you do nothing. Like, what is this YouTube? This is so easy, like, and you're making money. This is ridiculous. Like, go get a job. So that's, some people would tell this to your face, but kind of jokingly, wow. but you kind of know what they mean. Uh, a lot of people talk behind our backs. Uh, a lot, of, we get looks. Uh, people don't understand, like, what we mean by being a YouTuber. Like, what is this? Like, this channel gave us such great opportunities and connections and just, you know, like just being able to talk to you and then uh, meet up with Hadar and then all those people that I met through YouTube, like that's been just incredible. And of course, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. 
perseverance and dedication um but you know you get something yeah. out of it i was curious how did your friends and your family react to you deciding to leave you know like the jobs that you were working on before and to pursue an online business in a literal sense to pursue means to chase or follow someone or something in order to catch them as a noun this word is pursuit you could talk about a police chase or pursuit but when you pursue something you try to achieve something over a long period of time example she moved to hollywood to pursue acting so my mom she supported us if someone supports you or gives you support they're kind helpful and sympathetic to you especially during a difficult time in your life or as an honest case a new business venture for example if your big objective you know is to get fluent in english then you need people who support that objective and you need to be doing these things every single day so that when you come to your your deliberate practice of learning english you're 100% there some of my friends were very excited like really i could tell like genuinely happy for us if you can tell something you are able to recognize something because of certain signs that show it example she's a good person i can tell by how generous she is i can tell that he's disappointed we also use this phrase in the expression tell something from a mile away example i could tell from a mile away that he was lying Anna is saying that she could tell her friends were genuinely happy for her, which means they were happy in a sincere way, as opposed to faking it. <laughs> Do you like my fake laugh? <laughs> <laughs> my laugh is genuine. Ethan is faking it, but my laugh is genuine because I love these dad jokes. But most of the people, like when you say that you are a YouTuber, they they mm -hmm. think that you're a slacker, basically. Like. <laughs> Slacker is an alternative way to say a lazy person. Example: Don't be a slacker. Get off the couch and go to school. If you want, you can use this as a phrasal verb too. Example: Stop slacking off and get back to work. So that's some people would tell this to your face but kind of jokingly, wow. but you kind of know what they mean. Uh, a lot of people talk behind our backs. Uh, a lot of, we get looks If you say something to somebody's face, you criticize something they did directly to them instead of to someone else. This is in opposition to talking behind someone's back. Example: I said that he shouldn't be saying things behind her back. He should go and say it to her face. A lot of people talk behind our backs. Uh, a lot of, we get looks. If you get looks, it means that people look at you in a way that shows disapproval for what you're doing. Example: I got all kinds of looks at the mall because I wasn't wearing my mask. Next time, I'll have an extra one in case I lose it again. You know, like just being able to talk to you and then uh, meet up with Hadar and then all those people that I met through YouTube, like that's been just incredible. When you meet up with someone, you meet with that person. We sometimes say meet up instead of just meet, especially when it is a more informal circumstance. When we say that you meet someone through someone or something, it means that the intermediary was that person or thing. Example: I met my wife through a friend of mine. She met her best friend through volunteer work. And of course, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Perseverance and dedication, um, but, you know, you get something yeah. out of it. If something takes a lot of work, It is not easy and you have to make an effort to do it. Example: It took me a lot of work to raise twins. With everything that takes work, you usually get something out of it, meaning you get a benefit. Example: I didn't love my last job, but I did get some things out of it, like experience dealing with customers. You know, I find what Anna has been able to do mastering the English language so inspiring. She's never even traveled to an English-speaking country. Now, if you want to learn more about how she did this and hear her incredible journey, then remember to listen to the full interview for free, which is linked down in the description below. Now, let's test everything that you've learned by watching without subtitles and answering some quiz questions.
So people are listening and maybe some of them don't know you, but they're they're hearing your voice. They're hearing that you have a really fantastic accent when you speak. Thank you. And I think there's probably a lot of assumptions that people will have like... that you probably were privileged, you probably got to live in the United States or something like that. And people I think are usually shocked to hear that you've never been to an English speaking country. I'm not sure if this has changed now, but I did hear that when you were younger, you got selected to study abroad in the USA, but that you couldn't go, unfortunately, just because you couldn't afford it at the time. How do you think that your English learning journey might have been different if you had been able to go? Well, I think that my life would be different right now if I if I went there, but um, no regrets, actually. I did regret about that like for a very long time. I was like, mm -hmm. damn, I lost this opportunity and I could have, I don't know, everything could have been different. Um, first of all, I want to say that I don't think that my accent is perfect and that my speaking skills are perfect and that I am so good in English, at English. And I'm still learning. Like every single day, I, I'm learning something new. I practice my speaking still till this day and my pronunciation. So I've never had any like friends, like American friends to be able to talk to on a regular basis. No, that, that wasn't the case at all. Um, people assume that, uh, <laughs> I, I, I hear this and read this a lot, like she's a liar. <laughs> she, she, she definitely lived in the US or is still there and she's just very good at keeping it a, sec a secret. Um, sometimes, you know, like people will say, oh no, no, I definitely can hear her accent like, She's mm -hmm. from Russia, although I'm not, I'm from Ukraine. But she's from Russia, like I can hear her accent. And you know, like people, people are different. People have different opinions and I don't mind. So one of the things I was also curious about uh, from our research, I believe you kind of come from a smaller town in the Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that in your town, like YouTube teacher is not such a common profession that you'll tend to meet people who do that, right? So Not at all. I was curious, how did, your friends and your family react to you deciding to leave, you know, like the jobs that you were working on before and to pursue an online business. So my mom, she supported us. Um, some of my friends were very excited, like really, I could tell, like genuinely happy for us. But most of the people, like when you say that you're a YouTuber, they they <laughs> think that you're a slacker, basically. like. <laughs> <laughs> you do nothing like what is this youtube this is so easy like and you're making money this is ridiculous like go get a job so that's some people would tell this to your face but kind of jokingly wow. but you kind of know what they mean uh a lot of people talk behind our backs uh, a lot of, we get looks People don't understand like what we mean by being a YouTuber. Like, what is this? Like this channel gave us such great opportunities and connections and just, you know, like just being able to talk to you and then uh, meet up with Hadar and then all those people that I met through YouTube, like that's been just incredible. And of course it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. 
perseverance and dedication um but you know you get yeah. something out of it well hello boys and girls and welcome back to beyond borders in this episode i talked to a language learning hero of mine ollie richard from i will teach you a language now back in the day when i was learning spanish french and catalan i found the advice on ollie's blog so inspiring 